I have no use for the people who have learned the limits of the possibility. Terry Pratchett. Education should be for the child, not the future adult. Anonymous. I have no special talent. I'm only passionately curious. Albert Einstein. I'll be a dreamer till the day I die. Spirits by the Strombellas. Good morning. My name is Francesca Carnavali. I'm a sixth form boarder from Massachusetts, and today I'd like to read to you all a little story I wrote entitled The Game. If only the world could turn from the gears that power the minds of the curious. If instead of worship, worshiping rectangle sheets of green death, we only praise illuminated eyes that reflect the adornment of imperfection. Only if society can stomach the pricelessness of a passion-driven education and the impact of insightful questioning will the planet and its inhabitants receive a just chance at prosperity. So what if the world is puppeteered by ignorant greed and power-hungry privilege when you have the irreplicable key? You, even in the most dire and restricted circumstances, have freedom. Now, while it is not necessarily the freedom they tauntingly dangle just beyond the length of our chains, it is the freedom that those of authority will never quite grasp. For it is not legacy, wealth, skin, or sex that determines your worth, nor is it influence, knowledge, or skill. Anyone has the ability to achieve great things, but few have the capacity to foresee beyond what is great. As long as one has not forgotten the secrecy of the mind, freedom has not wandered too far beyond their clever eyes. The only bounds for the ambitiously curious are the six cardboard walls of the box they swore on their life they would never step back into. Paper money, paper box, paper words, the last of which has ironically lost its meaning once the translators of the most powerful tools in the world, words are now tarnished by mindless repetition to fulfill the cavity of silence and to mask their lack of execution. But luckily for us, we can rearrange our magnetic letters to display new thoughts on the worldwide fridge, although constant validation and consumerism will decompose the nutritional value of knowledge, the same knowledge that is your power, but without education, we are stripped powerless. So to those humble enough to remember their fortune, solidify a foothold and keep your head above that box before it is too law for. In the 48 laws of power, always say less than necessary. Show less than is necessary, do less than is notable, and appear less than capable because your power lies in unpredictability. Words are one of the billion mediums of expression, yet we choose this one for clarity and conciseness when intent speaks sharper than the point of any scribble. So mask it well. Only humble ambition can be shielded from their surveillance, while the intent of power cannot be hidden by formal language and advertisement. If you look for them, you will see them everywhere. We want difference and diversity, but only when it benefits our statistics, because statistics are their power, and you are the statistics. Are you catching on yet? This is a game. By birth, you must play. But depending on your character, death may be to win or to lose. So how can we win in a game written by another man's rules? First, be curious. 
Find something or many things that intrigue you. The thing that keeps your mind ticking, that you could talk about for hours, something that you are desperate to master. Now, want it. You need to care. To test if something is worth your energy, imagine a world in which you would never be able to explore it again. How much do you truly want to learn? And if you don't have anything that means something to you, which may be many of you, I'm sorry, but without a spark, I can't help you. Nothing and no one can change your life other than you, so please return when you know who you are. But for the rest of you, who have fought to keep your fire alive, let me teach you how to play the game. To win the game, you need to know three things. One, know you are in the game. For this, I've just told you, but you need to be convinced of it. Every time you look into a person's eyes, mentally note if they have a spark, because you can tell. When you've got it, you know who around you has it too. Curiosity and passion emanate from people, although it's easily mimicked. Happiness or enthusiasm does not necessarily equate to an eagerness for enlightenment or the overwhelming urge for rectification. Oddly, I find that people unafraid of anger, love, and despair are more genuine than those who believe joy is the ultimate life goal. And if you want to know a little secret about the purpose of life, I'll tell you it's to be content without satisfaction, to be constant while in motion, and to be knowledgeable of what you don't know. Or it's to make a boatload of meaningless cash and live a comfortably assimilated life. You choose. Number two, every no is a challenge. To win the game, you need to level up. And to do that, you need to master your craft. Begin by picking the lock of your mind where you will find storage for the information that is your ammunition, but no manual to wield your weapon. How we learn is to fail. So every unjust no becomes an evaluation in which you will weigh your worth on another's scale. Limits are made from fear and statistics, so be the outlier. But don't forget, life isn't fair, and you have to follow the rules, although only enough to stay afloat because we can't guarantee anything. After all, you only have one life, they say, so spend it wisely. But if you're going to break the rules, do it while no one is watching, because free thought is a sin here, and you don't want to end up on the naughty list now, do you? The trick is to balance the risk with the reward, downplay to deceive, and use the system to your advantage. Life isn't fair, isn't acceptable anymore. So if you want change, do it. Don't waste your words, we have enough of those. So if there's a problem, fix it, because nobody else will. Discipline and drive will be your one-way road to purpose and accomplishments, even if some rules have to be broken to get there. Remember, those who have never met success as a result of pleasure have never met success at all. Number three, decide if you want to win or not to lose. You've played the game long enough to know the life you will end up with if you choose to continue on this route. And this outcome may not be so bad, but if you follow the rules, your life will be proportionate to your privilege and the loop will go on. But if you can take your passion and extrapolate it beyond yourself, you might have a chance at victory. And if you truly are as ambitious as you think, you already have decided upon your answer. So now that you have chosen the spark over the system, you can begin your journey. To successfully execute your mission, you must first be able to survive alone in your mind. Before intent is revealed, one must eliminate doubt and make allies with the conscience. Once one commits to oneself and places complete trust on their mind, there's no turning back. To escape the game, one must know all extents of the imagination. The boss level will be an inner battle, and it's up to you to be the hero of your own narrative. There is no savior other than yourself, and the most dangerous obstacle you will face is none other than a self-sabotaging reflection. But with curiosity and ambition in control, the mind becomes a safe haven. 
This is the only home one needs and is the only realm where freedom lies. So find it. You all have a key. This key is to a door. This door is your exit. This exit is to freedom. You all have freedom. The imperium of the mind is your irreplicable key. So don't lose it. Thank you.